welcome to the first video in the Quad Tone Soloing series. Let me lay out the framework that we will be following uh, in learning Quad Tone Soloing. So what we've covered so far is learning the chord shapes for both the jazz as well as the blues. If this is the first time that you're joining us, you can actually check out these videos here. So the framework is like this. We learn the chords first, we learn the scales first. Now we're learning how to use them. The next part, we learn the arpeggios. After the arpeggios, then we will learn the pentatonics and how we can use them. When I say the pentatonics, I don't just mean the major and the minor and the standard pentatonics. I mean the altered pentatonics. For this lesson, we will need the knowledge from the Blues Chords Workshop, lesson one, where we start off with the voicing group A. So voicing group A in the key of D blues. Okay, it goes like this. joining us please revisit this lesson here in order to learn the chords right so how are we going to approach our arpeggios here similar to the blues chords workshop where there are only two chord shapes okay so this is d7 that's one chord shape then we have g7 another chord shape and then a7 which is the same chord shape as g7 okay However, when it comes to the arpeggios, we have to learn three arpeggios. So the first arpeggio, D7, goes like this. So we're starting on the fifth fret of the fifth string. Okay, that should be our starting point because it is the root note. We can start off with the other chord tones later. But we also want to be able to extend it below this note. So we go to adding these two notes. Okay, But our starting point should be... Right. So we will be always be using this shape over the one chord of group A voicings. The idea here, we will pack our arpeggios to the chord shapes in the same group voicing. Right, now, over the G7, we are not going to be playing this shape ascending, okay? Because I don't agree in my teaching, right? I don't uh, think that we should learn arpeggios this way. ascending all the time. I, I always teach my students how to connect them and the way to do it, okay, we're going to figure out the second inversion of the arpeggio of G7. Instead of starting from here, we want to be using them over the same chord shapes as we learn in group A voicing. So, the shape goes like this. that arpeggio instead of on the root note we're starting it on the third but we are not going to be ascending we want to descend what i mean by that is okay let me start off with the d7 arpeggio first now we go to g7 descending okay so that at least it's it's more musical in a sense and it's more it's more usable Rather than right so when we are learning this as I mentioned try to connect them so the way I do it 
we ascend with one arpeggio, we descend with another arpeggio. So how do we connect them? Okay, so demonstrate again. And then we go down one fret. Okay, but how do we connect again to go back into the one seven, the D seven, okay? How I do it, I add an additional note here. So that on the downbeat, we are back on the root note. Alternatively, you can do this, okay? Descend. Okay, instead of going down there, we go down one string. So on the downbeat, we're back on the root note. So it goes like this. Okay, then we're ready for the 4-7 arpeggio. So practice that first and once we're ready, we'll proceed. <laughs> How do we add the 4-7 arpeggio? Okay, so once we end it on the 1, we can go back to... So remember this, we're going down one string on the same fret. You can either use two fingers or you can use the same finger and roll it like how you would if you were sweeping. Okay, so let me do it again. Okay, so we stopped on the sixth or on the third of D, which is the F sharp. How we can okay, let's explore the A7 arpeggio. Since we're in the same position, A7, it fits the group A voicing, right? However, it's a bit of a jump from the F sharp on the fourth string. So what I like to do, I go to the note before the F sharp in I guess this shape which would be the E note so I go essentially playing the A7 arpeggio starting from the E note and I ascend so let me do it again for you from the I guess the 4 chord Then I'm back on the root on the downbeat. And I go to the 5 7. And this allows me to cycle back to the root note on the downbeat again. So if I were to put it all together, it would go like this. here that the learning of this entire arpeggio sequence right in the beginning it may sound useful for you as a lick and you can use them as a lick in your playing but the main objective of learning these changes these arpeggio changes is to get the i guess the muscle memory into your fingers so that you know how you're going to change on the way up and as well as on the way down 
okay so there are also other variations but i guess the main way i think is to connect them so that you can go up and down right smoothly and incorporate the changes into your fingers that's more important rather than trying to memorize the okay over the d7 is this shape over the g7 is this shape and over the a7 right knowing that uh, isn't as useful as being able to play that okay so learn this sequence as i've covered it and after a while you're able to pull it off okay give yourself a measure to gauge i always uh, say if you can try to do it maybe three or two cycles then you're pretty much there do we need to learn them in reverse it is up to you right but i think for blues it's actually uh easy enough to be able to do it one time because blue sometimes you hold the chord for more than one bar uh, for the jazz arpeggios uh, it is a good idea to actually switch them in reverse okay so with that you're able to actually peg the arpeggios to the chords in the same group voicings after a while, you want to experiment on your own, right? By breaking away from the sequence of the arpeggios. So you're able to... So that's it for this week's lesson guys take your time to learn these arpeggios it takes some time to actually get it down right but it is well worth the effort if you like this video please click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel it will help me very much i'm also on patreon you can sign up as a patreon and get access to some patreon only contents this is Rizal fd for the happy guitar channel